<laughs> welcome back to our um, podcast where we talk about movies that we've just seen. We just got back from Disney's remake of Beauty and the Beast. I'm here with Sean. <laughs> Hello. And oh boy, howdy, did I not like this movie. Same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Let's let's give some of our original our, our thoughts on the original movie. I love the original movie. It's a classic. It's not one of my favorite Disney movies. Or like like it is one of my favorite movies, but it's probably like in the bottom of the top ten. Okay. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of things in the original that I love, like like moments and bits and pieces. Yeah. Um. So it's not like. This was an untouchable movie for me, but in many senses, it also was. Yeah, I mean, I greatly enjoy this movie as a kid. Um, I will say that just knowing the context around a lot of this film, like such as the fact that this was like the first animated film to be awarded for best movie in the Oscars. Well, no, no, no. It, it was nominated. It was nominated for it, best it, picture. Yeah, for best and it picture. won. Best Picture in the Golden Globes. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yes. Yeah, but it was nominated. It was like, this was a big time deal. Oh, like this... that was a huge deal. It's the first animated picture. And uh, I don't know if it still holds the record for only, but I don't think it does. I think a couple of other animated pictures uh, soon after that were also maybe nominated. That would... But, makes sense to me, but nothing in recent history. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, that's for another time. To say Beauty and the Beast is a huge milestone movie is underplaying it. This yeah. movie is super, super, super important. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. <gasps> please, please, for the love of God, don't just go see this remake and say that you've seen Beauty and the Beast. Like, if there is a soul out there who has not seen the original animated version of this, please go see it. Uh, Otherwise, you're dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I even have to say that, but oh my god. Okay. So... <sighs> I guess we'll just say right now, we're not holding any bars when it comes to spoilers or anything. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Here's the thing. If you like this movie, that's fine. That's great. You are entitled to your opinion. If you like this movie, fantastic. But this is I, our opinion. I don't care. You can you can tell me in the comments I'm being too harsh. I'm not judging it on its own merits. Guys, I do not care. This I, I'm going to give you my opinion of this movie, and that's how I feel. And no matter what you say, you're not going to change that. Okay? Okay. Everyone has opinions. I have mine. You have yours. If you like this, that's great. Now, let's talk about this. Cause let's talk about our opinions on this film. I've not been excited for this remake at all. I do not like these Disney remakes. No. No, it's uh, completely unneeded. It's rather hurtful to the original animators that worked so hard on these films. I mean, I I wouldn't say it's hurtful to them because the the original is still there. That's it's true, just, yes. It just kind of this it movie a bad feels taste. Yeah, this movie feels cheap compared to the original, which is saying something because they spent a lot of money on this movie. Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> they spent way too much money on this to uh, be a worse version of the original. Yeah. Because it is. I mean, I'm not even... I'm going to be less harsh on this movie than Tennille is. And trying to give it as fair a point as I can, this movie does not really work by itself. No, no. It, it is doesn't. relying completely... It's like the same qualm I had with the Jungle Book remake. Mm -hmm. It lies so... Like, it, lies it relies so much, so much on the... Disney movie that it is a remake of that it cannot stand on its own. I mean, in fact, if you have not seen the original movie, this movie does the exact same thing, beat for beat, except they mix up certain points and they then it make, doesn't work. Yeah, they just make it worse. Yeah, it's like 
no, they had a perfect transition from this scene to the next, but you put that scene early, so you have no good transition to go to the next one, so we're just going to say, I wonder what's over there. <laughs> right. And then you just do it, because you can't figure out any other way to tag these two scenes together. Right, because... Okay, you can at least say for the Jungle Book remake that it tried to, to do be its, its own, own thing, thing kind of. Sort but of. this movie does not. not. Like, there are shots that are the... And we had the same problem in Jungle Book, too, yeah. where they took shots that were, like, the exact same from other Disney movies. Yeah. Not from Jungle Book. Yeah, Jungle Book decided to pull from things like The Lion King. And Tarzan. And Tarzan. For some reason, not well the because they wished they were remaking those movies and Which, not the Jungle Book. I mean, yeah, that's true. But no, it's like there's so many shots in this where it's like they just this okay this movie is the definition of the meme. Hey, I need to do my homework. Mind if mind if I see yours? Okay, but try not to make it too obvious. It's like, can I copy your homework? Sure, but don't make it too obvious. Yeah, and then they do. The same thing, except it looks bad. Because that's what this is. Sure, it's got... It's really pretty with lots of swirls and sparkles and gold. Gold. There's so gold. much junk on the screen. It's bad to look at. Yeah, this movie is... Like, like okay, if I had to give a complete fair review of it, I'd say this movie's fine. Yeah. Like, if you were excited about the trailers of this movie, you're probably going to be just as happy when you go to go see it. Mm -hmm. They add a lot of unnecessary stuff, both in character backstory, plot, and design everywhere. Yeah, like, a, a lot of the plot stuff that they add is completely pointless. Like, oh, this is the age... like. In movies right now, you have to explain everything. I don't know if you've noticed, but you can't just let things be implied. You have to explain everything. Everything has to have a backstory. It has to make sense. Well, or, or it runs on, like, the cinema sins concept of if they don't explain it, then it's bad storytelling because we're supposed to use our brains to figure out what this could possibly mean. Like, oh, I'm... Sorry, people are need to be spoon fed what magic means nowadays, but yeah, but this movie does that a lot, um, where it has to embellish a lot of the plot and backstories of these characters. And by embellish, I mean each character gets like two lines of backstory, and that's supposed to explain away anything that make like anything that makes up their character. Right, like okay, Gaston is given a backstory in this movie. <laughs> We're, uh, yeah. We're, okay, he's given a backstory. The backstory is literally he's, like, on his horse in town in the first scene when they're singing Bell, and he's like, I am back from the war, and now I want to marry this girl. And that's his backstory. Like, all they say is... Oh, he was a war dude. He yeah, he he was a captain cuz some yeah. of them call him like Captain Gaston sometimes. And it doesn't add, add anything. anything. If anything, it actually weakens the film at the end cuz he has he's not a hunter in this movie. Or right. He is, but they don't talk about the fact that he's a hunter. Mm -hmm. It's like because in in the original, there's like the way they introduce Gaston is genius. They say so much about his character without having to say a thing. Mm -hmm. The first thing we see of Gaston in the original is we see birds in the sky and he shoots a bird down, and then there's a shadow cast across him, and you see him in the shadows, and then he comes out of the shadows and blows away the smoke on his gun. Like that is some genius visual storytelling. And what does he do in this movie? He's, he's on a horse. He's on a horse up on a mountain. Spying at Belle through a telescope. Right. Which doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> doesn't say anything about him. And If anything, he's a creeper, but it, that's not <laughs> I mean, that's through. implied so many other ways. Yeah. So many other and better ways. Yeah, it, just 
It's baffling. Also, the Beast's backstory. Well, we're on the subject of backstories. <laughs> the Beast is a terrible person because his dad was a terrible person and passed it on on him. That's his backstory. Didn't you like that backstory? Oh, while we're talking about backstories, let's talk about that opening. Oh, wow. The So, in the original movie, obviously, there's the... Elegant stained glass windows, windows showing, and the narrator tells you about what's happening. With the curse and the enchantress and all that. And it's all very poignant and it gets it across in just a few clear images. And, mm -hmm. and it's like one of the most iconic things from this movie. Yeah. This in opening. the remake, they decide, they decide to do the thing that the original filmmakers were like, who they had to fight to not have in the movie because remember oh, yeah uh, they wanted to have this scene originally and everyone's like no, no this, this is, is a terrible idea it's long drawn out it's boring nobody wants this because movie trivia time in the original beauty and the beast the uh writer of the songs uh howard howard ashman really wanted a scene where you see the prince, when he's young and he's like throwing tantrums and, you know, you see him be mad to the enchantress and all the animators and the directors and stuff were like, this scene just looks bad. It makes the prince less sympathetic. It's, it's just not good. We've got to cut it. And they did because they realized it was a bad choice. In this movie, they kind of go with that idea. Where he's sitting on an ornate throne with a whole harem of ladies just dancing for him yeah like they're having this big extravagant party but and, and that's all fine like it's not the choice i would make especially considering they're just copying the original it's mm -hmm. like why don't you at least take the things that were most poignant about the original yeah. instead of but whatever and then what sucks is they have the narrator still there the narrator's still talking over this whole scene which is pointless. You should be showing us, which is what you are, but don't also be telling us. It's and, not needed. And this narrator is not nearly as good as the original. Like, no. she is just, like, phoning in these lines. And, like, her very last line is, well, like, the very last line is, who could ever love a beast? Mm -hmm. But in this version, the lady saying is like, but who could ever love a beast? Like, like, oh, get ready for the wacky hijinks that oh, are going we're to We're going to show you how this works. <laughs> it's like, no, it's supposed to be sad and depressing. Take yourself seriously, movie. But another thing, this is just a small thing that I noticed mm -hmm. is in the original, the enchantress comes to the door and is like, please let me in. All mm -hmm. I have is this rose. In this version, it's like, Boom! I blast open the doors. Hey, you're gonna let me in. Or you're gonna let me stay in because I already walked in. Right. And all I'm gonna give you is this rose. And then he and takes then he it takes and just it. chuckles at her a little bit. And then she's like, you don't fucked up. Yeah, and then she curses the whole place. Which is to really weird because... They still had the narrator saying the lines of like, she knocked on the door and he was repulsed and turned her away. And he doesn't do that. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, and then she told him not to be deceived by appearances. And like, Except by it, this it, point it's in on the video, a shot on her and she's, she's not, not saying she's not anything. She's not saying anything. And if anything, she's already made up her mind that she's going to screw him over at this point. Right. Like there is... Like, what they're saying doesn't match what they're showing. Right. Because they're using the original script from the original movie, but they're not doing that here. Yeah. Which is terrible. Either one, change the words. Two, take out the words. Three, change the scene to reflect the words. Yeah. Any of those would have been very easy to do. But instead, you decided to do none of them, and keep something from the original even though you decided to change the opening it, oh there's so many we're only at the opening here there's so many unnecessary changes like maurice a uh, bell's father is they just no longer a crazy inventor he's an artist he's a misunderstood artist but he's who, not even misunderstood he's just yeah an artist. okay they live in town 
They live what? in they the live middle of in town. In the middle of town. But why they're do still they have a farmers. Horse? Yeah, why do they have a horse? They have a small garden and chickens, sure. But why do they have a horse? They live in town. And it's not like it's a like such a big town that like, you know, the town grew around them or something. No, they moved into town even though they're farmers and he's an artist. It doesn't make a whole lot they have, like, of sense. A garden, but like literally 10 f- you can see like 10 feet the away out. is the fountain. No, 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 is is out of town. Yeah, 10 feet away is out of town. And if you look like the other way, you can see the fountain at the center of town. Right. It's like, so it's like there's there's no need for a horse. You're in the middle of town. You're not like out secluded like you were in the original, which was perfect because you the, you guys the were crackpots and you're like crackpots. you crackpots. You live out in the country away because from everyone else. Yeah, it's like it's it's, it's symbolism. Visual storytelling, and this movie does not get that. Yeah, this one's like no, they just live in town because it's more convenient. Mm-hmm. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, one thing they did a lot in this movie was they changed the words to songs, like right. like Gaston's song that's sung by LeFou. They add to it quite a bit. They change a lot of the words. They which, they put in like they try to try add to, to it by putting pauses in here, and I'm just yeah. like they did that like a lot. every single song. Every single song, they like slow it down a little bit, and then they just stop for a little bit, it's and then just they just keep going. Padding. It's just mm-hmm. like and they do this seriously in every, every single, single song. O- original song. They they just have a moment where it's like the song's supposed to continue, and they just decide to all stop. They just kind of stop and give a long kinda, pause. Kind of have a breather. And a lot of times it's in places that don't make sense. Like oh. in the Be Our Guest section, um, it's like L- Lumiere's talking about the the plates near mm-hmm. the beginning. And then he takes a long pause. And then he continues talking yeah. about the plates. It's not like he's taking a pause so that you can then like switch subjects yeah, to and something like, else. They do they tell jokes. I do tricks with my fellow oh, candlesticks. Yeah. I don't know if that's the exact point, but just imagine if that's where he started talking, because that's what it felt like. He just stopped in the middle of a phrase. Yeah. And just picked up again. Um, but yeah, so they changed the words in a lot of these songs, and sure, that's fine. It kind of works sometimes. But the first song, Belle, like the whole, oh. Bonjour, good day, how is your family? That whole thing, they kept that word for word but they didn't show what they were saying again. It's like, <laughs> Belle is like, oh, isn't this amazing? Okay, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she, <laughs> she, like, they keep the song the exact same way, but, but yeah, Belle has a section where she's like, oh, isn't this amazing? It's my favorite part because... You'll see. And she's like talking to a sheep in the original, like pointing right. it out to them. I mean, which is a little crazy, but she's supposed to be a little crazy. In this movie, she's just walking through town she doesn't singing even, this lyric. She doesn't even have the book open. She's just kind of holding it. Oh, and there's so many. There, like, there's a time at the beginning where she's like, I'm returning this book I borrowed. She doesn't have a book. There's no book on her outfit. She It's like she has one pocket and she stuck bread in there earlier so we know there's not a book in there right uh, she's her hands are empty also she magically made an apple appear inside that horse's mouth there's so many weird editing choices in this too where yeah like especially when maurice was going through the woods and getting chased by the wolves mm-hmm. where it was like i making, wasn't sure where he was yeah it was it was bizarre because like, usually live action movies do this right like they can do the jump cuts really quick and you still kind of know what's going on generally generally uh but this was so weird because it was like there was like he hit something and then he was on a cliff but then the wagon was flipped over and then the horse took off and, and then, then we're there was back a, to Maurice and then and Maurice then... is on the cliff again and then he like oh no there's a wolf that looks that has a scar across his eye just <laughs> like as soon as that wolf came i started laughing because it's like <laughs> did sheer con mate with one of the wolf packs and had some because it's like the exact same scar exact and he's got like a blind eye it's like it's, like, it's sheer con from the jungle book in wolf form yeah from the J- jungle book remake yeah just like came back as a wolf 
and for this movie for some reason. Like, they, they needed to give the wolf an identity. I don't know why. It made no sense. And then he, then, yeah. And I don't know what is this fascination with giving what is supposed to be intimidating predators a huge disadvantage of a blind eye. Yeah. How is that supposed That <sighs> limits their ability to be intimidating and scary as an actual animal. Instead, it's a cartoon character now. Right, it's like this wolf was more cartoony than the wolves in the movie. And the wolves in the movie, in, in the original, in the original were not terribly realistic anyways, because it was like, do it on a horse, we're totally gonna rip this guy to shreds. Oh yeah. Well, and they just multiply as the yeah. movie goes on. And, <laughs> but this version then, is just like, I don't understand. Well, and then in this remake, what also got me was like, <laughs> the wolves chase Maurice to the castle. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then he doesn't shut the gate on them to keep them out. No, he the just rides off and the wolves stop. They're like, nope, we're not going in there. We know it's evil or something. So we're just going to stop at the gate kindly look and growl and go huffy huff huff and, and then walk away off. oh and the act like the acting between the wolves and the horse were really unconvincing oh yeah okay i wasn't sure if you noticed that too but it was like no the wolf i is supposed to be or the horse is supposed to be panicking because the wolves are nearby but it's just like the this horse, horse is not does act, not care it, the horse does not give a and crap. they didn't there's bother. even one point where maurice jumps off the cliff we talked about earlier and yells Philippe which is the new name, name of the horse and suddenly the horse is under him yeah even though we just saw the Philippe horse run off. sprint off he's suddenly back in the middle of all these wolves yeah just to catch Maurice it's like that makes no sense <laughs> uh, and oh and Maurice doesn't really interact with anyone in the castle. Maurice is a total asshole oh, in this movie. Oh, yeah. He just walks into it's the castle. It's so and just, weird. He's just like, you know, if you were a normal person... You, you do what he did in the original? Yeah, do what he did in the original, as in walk in and... He loud, knocks? Knocks, loudly proclaims that he's here. Is anyone home? He does this continuously until someone responds. Right. In this movie... movie he's just like... Hi, hello, is anyone here? Oh, I guess not. I'm just going to well, go and start doesn't... dicking around. <laughs> yeah. He just starts dicking around with everything. And it's all so they can tell this joke with, I mean, and the joke's like, like okay, kinda I, I, I kind of laughed at it. Where it's like, like, Chip's like, Mama told me not to move because I might scare you. Yeah. And then he's like, oh. Oh, and then he's. Just hightails it out of the house. Yeah, and then he like, just freaks out. And then as he's running out of the house, I'm like, okay, so when is the beast supposed to come in and get angry at him? That's... Oh, oh that's some bullshit gosh. we forgot about. Okay, okay, wait, we gotta back this we train up. back up. <laughs> okay, so they made Maurice an artist in this, so which... He invents like a little music box. Not even a music box. Okay, the whole point that he was an inventor in the original was mm -hmm. because he's going to the inventor's fair. fair. Yes. Where is he going? He, okay, he this says he's, just he's going, going to, to the, the market. market. Why is he taking this thing with him? I don't know. He made, like, this little gold ornate, like... Music box? It, it's kind of a music box, but it's also, like, an animatronic thing where parts move and stuff. Um... But it's just like... Which makes him sound like an inventor, but he's not. He, he's he's not, an artist. This is the only thing he does inventory. There's nothing else in his house that implies that he messes with gears and cogs. Which I guess is why they have... It, it muddles it even more because then they make a callback to this. Call, callback to him making this little muddled... Like this little gear box thing, which is never talked about again. He makes this thing... And then it gets And they put a lot of emphasis on it. Like, there's a whole yeah. song. There's a whole he song sings. He's singing about this thing and, like, ha about his ma his dead wife. Holy crap, was the dead wife not needed? No, okay, but. but We're not going to get to that yet. Go, go, still staying on Maurice. Uh, so, yeah. Belle wants a rose. Yeah, Belle, he, you know, he puts this gearbox into the back of the wagon because very carefully because he's taking it with him for no reason to the marketplace is he going to sell it he never says he's going to sell it it's never explained 
And I know we just talked about how movies don't need to explain everything, but, but this is just bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. He's just put this thing together. In the original, he made a machine to go off to the fair, which he says. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll never get this thing ready for the fair. Yeah. And like, he says it not just straight to our face, but he implies it convincingly enough that we know exactly what they're talking about. Right. But this and thing, he just builds it and puts it in the back of the thing and no one talks about it again. Yeah, and then he's like, he's on his cart and wagon and he's like, well, Belle, is there anything? And and this is the only segue they give to like say where he's going. This mm -hmm. is the only time they the, say anything. Like, he's he's like, already ready to go. Yeah. And like, she's like standing there and he's like, well, do you want anything at the market? Yeah, and she's like, a rose. I, I want a rose. <laughs> And he's like, you always want a rose. Why? Then, she? Oh, oh, I guess, okay. They I guess explain I, that later. Yeah. Which they, is dumb <laughs> bullshit, but we'll get to that later. They do explain it later. But she, he's like, when do you all, he's like, why do you always want a rose? Because you always get me one. Right. Or and, something. Or, no, no, no. He's like, but you always want a rose. And she's like, but you always get me one. Or something like that. And he's like, well, okay, I guess I'm getting her a rose. Okay, and so Flash the reason... back to the Beast Castle. The reason he gets caught by the Beast... Is he, not because he's breaking in or <laughs> not he, eating his food, he, not sitting by the fire. GTFOs right out of that castle after one of the objects comes to life, which, you know, is understandable. And... He goes into the garden and there's all, like, he sees there's a bunch of white roses. He's like, oh, right, I can't. No, he doesn't even see the roses yet. He's just, like, starts taking off and then he's like, wait, I need to get a rose. For Belle. It's like, it's like what are you all, talking about? All sense of urgency is just dropped. Lost. Just dropped like, completely. I, I may be in mortal danger and have just seen something that <laughs> has confounds blown, the mind. That confounds the mind. But, but I, I need to get a rose. But I even though I'm sure. even though I'm totally lost, I can't even. I don't even know how I'm going to get home or anything. But I need to get a rose from this random per enchanted castles garden so he just starts dicking around looking through the garden and happens to very quickly find a giant rose bush full of white roses and he pulls one off and the beast who obviously must have known he was around this whole time because he's just like stalking this he's guy. stalking him he's just like sitting on top of the wall and then as soon as he pulls the rose off then he comes down he doesn't say anything he just growls and then it cuts away yeah, he doesn't even like. He doesn't like. like what are you doing so, in my castle? Yeah, there's anything. so much amazing dramatic build up in the original, and in this one, it's just the beast is like, and then grabs him and mm -hmm. like cut. Know. It's like this is not the reveal of the beast, or even like, well, or he's not even like a scary entity at this point. And they're out like outside, and it's yeah. brightly lit in the snow and yeah. stuff. It's like it's poorly done. It's like it doesn't have the there's atmosphere no menacing. of... There's no atmosphere here. You've already diffused that by having Maurice go back for a rose. <laughs> I was... Honestly, I'm glad... Glad? <laughs> I, for a moment, thought that Maurice is like, I need to get a rose! And then he goes back inside, finds himself up to the <laughs> West Wing to find the Enchanted Rose, and that's where the Beast finds him. I was like... Please don't tell me you're going to do it. No, he doesn't. With how much padding this movie had, I would not be surprised if that wasn't like part of the original script. And they were like, you know what? I think actually this movie is getting a little too long. Let's just have a rose be out in the garden. I mean, we've already put like an extra hour and a half to an hour in this movie. But whatever. <laughs> we have to have more pointless dance and songs. <laughs> Because, yeah, they add songs to this, and they all there do nothing. There is a ton of added songs. Yeah. And they're not even added songs from the like, musical. Yeah. Like, Home isn't in here, Human Again isn't in here. And, you know, yeah, sure, say like, oh, well, I thought you were criticizing it for being too much like the original. Why aren't you happy that they're doing some things new? And it's like, yes, okay, sure, but... The These do not add anything. Anything, And since this movie is already so much just a rehash of the original, you may as well keep the things that work. Like... Mm -hmm. Stop getting rid of the things that work and putting in things that don't work. Yeah. Because that's what you're doing in this movie. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, one thing we forgot to point out is by this point in the movie, because they cut this wrong from the original movie in the original he's going off to the fair 
and then we follow him as he goes to the fair and then gets caught in all this. Mm-hmm. In the in this version, uh, he goes off to the fair, and then we stay with Belle, who has to run into Gaston and turn him down permanently. Right, like they completely yeah. butcher that they scene. They completely like- butcher those few scene transitions. And then, so because they've already had the part where she runs off into the... Oh, wow. Yeah, so she's... Wait, wait, wait I, I have a nitpick here. Okay. Keep, keep that thought. But, like, the the scene where Gaston first, like, talks to Belle in that first musical number, mm-hmm. their whole interaction can be summed up with Gaston honestly trying to be like, oh, you read books? Well, I, you know... Tried um, to read a book once. Books. And, like, hey, at least he's not, like, throwing her, like... Book in the mud and, like, just discouraging her being from like, being... Being like, girls shouldn't read. You're How a can woman. you read this? There's no picture. Like, they tried really hard to make this guest on more sympathetic in a lot of ways, and yet trying to make him more despicable in others. Yeah. He's, he's just... A confusing character. Yeah, and confused, not as in, like, he's confused, although I think he is a little, but oh, yeah. as in he's confusing to watch. Yeah, his motivations change Fluctuate. halfway he's, through a scene. He's really bizarre. It's um, like, I'm wondering if he's the one that has mental issues in this movie. Yeah. Not Maurice. <laughs> yeah. But, but anyway... You know, Gaston honestly, like, tries, and he's like, you know, oh, books. And then Emma Watson's just, like, gives eh, this, no. eh, no Like, she literally face. just, like, turns away from him so that he could s- still see, see her, her face. And, and she like, just goes, eh, <laughs> and then walks away. And it was like, what? But, yeah, by this At point, she's... At Belle in the original movie had a lot of charm and class. She's, like, story. actually she could, smartly like, turns people down because... Yeah, it's like she outwits Gaston. Very easily because he's dumb as a rock. Right. But she doesn't just straight up, like, ugh, to his face ugh, or gross. anything. <laughs> yeah, Belle in this movie sucks. It's and like, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. Emma Watson is a fantastic person. She's, like, probably one of my idols growing up. I really like her as a human being. Yes. As an actor and in this movie, it's no good. Yeah. Like, this movie, she's... She, she's, I don't know if she's phoning it in because it really looks like it. If not, was she just being given really bad direction? Was she just having an off day? I don't know. But she was not convincing in any scene in this entire film. Mm-hmm. To, like, wanting and to be as there as perfect anything. as you would think Emma Watson is to play Belle, because, I mean, I'm sure when all of us, when I heard that Emma Watson was going to be playing like, Belle, oh, I was like, oh, choice. that's actually a perfect fit. But when you spend even more than an iota of a thought on it, it's it completely falls apart. She can't sing. They have to auto tune her throughout this entire oh, movie, yeah. and it's, it's very really obvious. Obvious auto tune too. It's not like oh they kind of had to auto tune it a little bit. No, the whole thing is auto tuned for her. It's really painful. And really, honestly, if we if we're gonna be completely honest with ourselves here, guys, you have to admit. Emma Watson wasn't even the perfect casting for Hermione Granger. When we hear Emma Watson is playing Belle, we're thinking, oh, Hermione Granger's playing Belle. And Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter books would have been a perfect Belle. But even in the movies, Emma Watson was too pretty. Just kind of gradually stops being 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 Hermione Hermione Granger. Granger. So... Yeah, there's so many things where it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> she just does these little, like, ugh. <laughs> and <it's> just, <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> Can I get back yes, to the thing yes, I've been holding on to before I forget? Mm-hmm. So yeah, she, like, after turning gas down, down permanently, she doesn't throw him in the mud or anything in this movie, but just turns him down. Yeah, it's like, didn't throw him in the mud or anything. He doesn't even propose marriage. She just like Belle is so no. more badass in the original. Like in this one, they think they can give Belle more character by like 
oh, well, she picks up a weapon. She picks up a stick. She's trying to defend herself. Like, wow, look at how assertive this new Belle is. And it's like, Physical no. strength is not everything. Well, and it's she's not. It's making her look wimpier. Like, yeah. the original Belle has a real strength of character, and she's mm-hmm. able... She doesn't well, need not violence. Physically strong. She she's... can talk down the everything. beast. She can talk down yes. Gaston. It's anyway, like, continue. Her wits are amazing. Yeah, but anyways, she talks it down, and then she... This is the point where, in the original and this version, she's like, Oh, me? His wife? Ah, oh, can you just imagine? Madame Gaston. And that whole thing, which immediately runs, turns into her running out onto the field and singing, I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. Which in the original, because they live in the middle of the country, you can believe that she did just run five, ten feet out of shot, like out of shot of the house. And, and then she's starts on the singing, hill. and you but, can still see her house. Yeah, in the you background. can still see her house in the background. This version, no, she like stops singing, turns around, sprints out of the town, and then we cut to seeing the town on a far away hill. She had to get really far she away just from the town. Booked it so that she could finish this number. Yeah, she just sprinted out there, and then just belts. It's like that made no sense. <laughs> that was another moment where I just laughed out loud. Yeah, I was like, what? She, no, you made her live in town. She has to sing this song in town. Well, and then they try to transition between that song and, like, the next scene by well, by making it stormy in the middle of her singing that song. Like, yeah. great big... She's like, I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. And storm I clouds are rolling in. And there's just, like... <laughs> storm yeah, and then, clouds. Yeah, like, and then the new version, this is where we transition to Maurice in the woods. Mm-hmm. But in the original, after she's done singing this... That's when Philippe comes sprinting up and is like, help! Right. Dude's in trouble. And then she's like, well, let's go. Yeah. But in this version, she's like, sings that song. And then we just got to presume that she has to walk all the way back to town as we just transition back to Maurice. Right. And it would have been perfect because then, like, she's in the hill and, like, the yeah. horse can come to her. And then she just takes off. Yeah. Because that's how they did it in the original. And it makes sense. Yeah. It's like, oh. You're here. Dad's not here. This is bad. Yeah. I gotta go right now. Instead, she just goes back home and tends to the chickens or something. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, uh. And the thing is, they add that sloppy transition in for what? They switch back to Maurice, and it has to be stormy so that a lightning bolt can hit a tree Which and crash down over. on the path because apparently... This, this castle is, like, concealed by some magic Oh, magic thing bullshit. That, you know, only for some reason opened up to Maurice. For some reason. For some There's reason. There's no actual reason why this opened up to Maurice only. Because later when he comes back with Gaston and LeFou in tow, the tree's back in place and the path is gone. Which, for no reason. Let's talk about that scene of padding. Oh, <laughs> Wow. I mean, this is jumping ahead in the movie a bit, but I don't think we should go piece... Should we go piece by piece to this entire film? I mean, let's let's just talk about things as we okay. think of them. This is jumping ahead a bit in the film. They, this... they just finished singing the song Gaston in the bar. And, this and is... Maurice mm-hmm. bursts in and he's like, I need help. And it's, it's, it's not... It's so poorly done. In this version, he's just like, help. Oh, I need help. My daughter, she has been taken by a beast. Oh, don't well, you understand? Okay. Yeah, it is like... In the original, in the he's original, like running around frantic, like, Oh my god, he's been taken by a beast and you need help and it's crazy. Oh. Right, and the townsfolk are like playing off of him in the original where they're like, Was it a big beast? Oh! Well, in this version, they're like, Are we taking him seriously? Are we laughing at him? I don't know. Right, the townsfolk are... And this whole movie. Weird. The townsfolk are very wishy-washy. They don't, like, the townsfolk don't have a collective mind, which just makes them hard to read. Yeah, some of them are like, oh, we love Gaston no matter what he does. And others are like, oh, no, but Gaston did these things that are terrible. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a bit. But, <laughs> yeah, Maurice comes in and he delivers these lines that aren't convincing. And he's like, oh, please, won't anyone help me? And Everyone Gast- just starts laughing at him. And, Gaston's and everyone like- starts laughing at him. And Gaston gets up and he's like, I'll help you. 
I'll help you. No, seriously, I'll help you. Guys, why are you laughing at this guy? Yeah, and then he, like, grabs Maurice and LeFou, trots along with him, and, they and go then off. they go off it's into like, the woods. It's genuinely a good thing for Gaston to do. He has terrible I mean, reasons for it. Yeah, it's like he later completely admits, he's like, well, I'm only doing it because I want to marry your daughter. And then Maurice is like, you're never going to marry my daughter. Which then... Gaston just, just decks him. Decks him. Just straight up punches him in the face and he's out cold. Which At they... which point, Gaston's like, well, now he's, seeing as he won't let me marry his daughter, he's and just... And I've just knocked him out. He's in the way. I have, like, he's now in the way, so I need to get rid of him. So I'm just going to tie him up and leave him under this tree so the wolves get him. Even though it's established that Gaston has guns. Yeah, even though it's established that Gaston has guns and kills things a lot, he was in the war, he doesn't just, like, you know... Slit Maurice's throat, stab him in the heart, shoot him, shoot him, choke him out, anything. No, I'm just gonna tie him up and to hold the tree. To, no, hide, tie him up and then put the tied up man under the tree. Right, he didn't tie him up to the tree. Yeah, it's like, no, he didn't try to wound get him at all. He just leaves him perfectly as he is, just tied up, hoping that the wolves will eventually come around and get him. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you're not gonna kill him and then the scent of blood will draw the wolves or any no no you're just really incompetent okay and and then this random beggar woman who's wait, been wait, wait, barely we'll, established we'll talk about her later oh. but lufu is there lufu is there it's like what are you doing yeah Lef okay they changed lufu a lot in this and you guys have probably heard they they decided to make lufu gay even though he was already like a pretty heavily gay coded character in the original i would say mm -hmm. they decided to make that more obvious but it's only obviously done for like jokes yeah. I, I don't feel like this was done well at all no it's like they obviously are like well the gays are popular right now so we need to make a gay character <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say it like that. No. It's one of those things where it's like... like they, their yes, heart was in the right place, but they did it poorly. They did it poorly. And, okay, but no, LeFou is there and he's like, Gaston, I don't think this is a good idea. Like, what if the wolves don't come and get him? Or what if someone finds him? Yeah. Or, like, I don't feel right just leaving this... I don't feel this comfortable doing this. Yeah. This is wrong. I was in a, I was in the, this ambiguous war with you, and this doesn't feel okay. Right. And Gaston's like, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. And then... Uh, okay, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this beggar woman. Okay, very, 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 very briefly established, way back near the beginning of the movie, Gaston's like, you know what happens to ladies that don't get married and their fathers die off? And then he points at a random book beggar woman, just like who's, who's like barely for, visible on screen, barely visible on screen, way off in the back, and is like, "That's how they end up begging for scraps." And that's the like Agatha. In like no, he, they don't even say no, her no. Name. He he briefly says okay. her name, whatever her name was. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's all we get for this lady. Mm -hmm. And then later, later after he's lady, tied, after Maurice is tied up, up this they, beggar woman comes back in, and she's the one that helps Maurice out of the ropes and stuff and she like helps. nurses him back to care because nurses she's living under a tree and you know it's like wh who is this who is this because and we've then, forgotten about the beggar woman at this point we thought that was a throwaway line or something yeah <laughs> and then no she at, at after she's like taking care of maurice maurice is like thank you agatha I don't think her name was Agatha, but we'll just use that because we can't remember what it is. <laughs> I thought it was Agatha. I thought it was like Bertha or... No. I thought maybe it had like an M in it or something. No. Whatever it was. Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, think, it's like Thank obviously he knows, he knows who, who this is. And, and we're like... we as the audience are like, what? what? And I was like... Speaking of the audience... Kids were running up. Like, this was pretty much a packed theater. Yeah. And kids were running up and down the aisles. They did not care. No. And... I did not feel like people were really invested in this movie. No. No one was invested in this movie. Uh, not even... The characters on the screen weren't invested in this movie. The audience, <laughs> the audience wasn't, invested wasn't invested in this movie. The kids weren't invested. No one was invested. No. And yet, people still clapped at the end. 
which confused me. The character designs in this movie were terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the animation is such a step backwards. Yeah, it's like there's nothing special. I mean, okay, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't understand the purpose of remaking this movie when, in live action, when the majority majority of your cast is all going to have to be animated anyways. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And these character designs are so clunky and... You can't use them. They're, they're just like, like these it's, are CG characters, mm-hmm. so we can make them really like ornate and stuff. But when you have to move those characters around, it you just looks you bad. You can't move them that and much. And these characters move all Way the too time. Mu- they never are. St- they're never still, except for when they're pretending to be still. Mm-hmm. Like this is unrealistically high levels of movement. Uh, chip the the cup. Never stops moving. Never stops moving because he has a little saucer and he uses this. skates around the saucer. Yeah, he uses the saucer as though it's like a skateboard or something. A skate park. (laughs) Yeah, he just like, he's doing tricks and flips off this like little thing. It's like, it makes no sense. When he's just delivering simple lines like, what's there, mama? And he's doing like like an ollie. (laughs) He's doing an ollie in like 360s and like spinning on his head and shit. It's like... This character feels like he's supposed to be out of the 90s, except his, like, that's what his movements tell me. All of these movements tell me he's a skater pro. I, I, I think you're reading a little too far into it, but yeah, it's just, he it just moves make sense. way too much. And a lot of the other characters move way too much. Oh, and the fake fabric when characters are getting dressed by the wardrobe. Oh, looks oh, really it's bad. It's so fake fake it's just like streams of fabric flying across the screen so you can't see what's going on and it and just then, looks like fake fabric it yeah. doesn't look real in any sense and yeah it happens, and then cut to like, a person in a costume yeah it's like cut to three guys in drag now and the one's happy about it jokes it's a joke because he's wearing woman's clothing and he's happy about it even though the context of the scene makes no makes sense why no he would be sense. happy even if he was wanting to be wearing women's clothing right it's like you're in the middle of a fight the other two guys are freaked out because the clothes just got changed and this guy's just like oh my god i'm wearing woman's clothing i love this which is fine but you just got dressed by an enchanted wardrobe and you're not terrified in the least? And all your friends are getting, like, murdered by these guys. You're and... okay with it. Okay. Talking about this fight scene, again, jumping all over the place, who cares? Um, yeah. Was it just me, or was this fight scene even more stupidly goofy than the original animated fight scene? Because I mean, it really felt like it. The original animated fight scene's pretty goofy, but at least the original animated fight scene had some moments where, like, it gets kind of intense, and Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's just shot so much better, and there's so much more, like, imaginative things happening. Yeah, in this version, oh, the harpsichord, which is now a character, uh, falls on a guy, and then it plays, like, the death's toll, death song. It's like, why? Mm-hmm. Well, and there were like, okay, there were only like maybe seven, seven or characters, eight seven animated enchanted an- characters in this, because like, like the enchanted object characters. Yeah, because There's only you like can't seven or make eight. A whole lot of because they obviously didn't spend their budget on making a whole bunch of extra animated characters. They spent it all on making this stupid castle large and ornate and stupid. <laughs> you said stupid twice. Uh, yeah. That's how much <laughs> I feel it is. <laughs> the, just want to talk about another thing. Mm-hmm. The rose in this movie. The particular curse that was put upon everybody in this castle. Oh, yeah. It's the same and yet different in a stupider way. <laughs> So, they tell us multiple times in this movie... In case you forget, forget, because... It's June. (sighs) And there's snow in June, but only around this castle. Uh This castle is now in perpetual winter because we're in Narnia now. (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like this curse makes everything perpetual winter, and as each individual uh, petal falls off this rose, everyone turns a little more inanimate, except this only happens when the petal ro- falls, and then everyone's like, Argh! Well, oh, and they don't no. actually visually they change don't, Yeah, they don't at visual all. change at all. It's just like they do a little, like, spasm of some sort of, like, oh, my clock thing's ticking. You're like, the hands of my clock are kind of trying to do the clock thing. Oh, no. And then they're fine again. Mm-hmm. Um, so this happens every time. Also, every time one of these petals falls, the castle deteriorates a little bit. Like, part of it falls and crumbles away. Which and, is a cool idea. Which is a cool idea, which but means... But in by, practice... But it, in practice, it doesn't work, because I called it right after that scene happened. I was like, okay, because I know in the original movie there's the big climactic fight on the outside of the castle. They're going to be on a castle that's falling to pieces because the rose is nearly depleted, mm-hmm. and it's just going to collapse, and that's how Gaston's going to die. Spoilers, that's exactly what happens in the new version, except the castle has barely been destroyed at this point. It's like, if you think about it, if the rose, as it falls apart, should the castle falls apart more, it like should be combined to each other, so when the rose is gone, shouldn't the castle also be gone? Right, but because it's the rose... Not. Because, like, it seems to imply mm-hmm. that the rose wilting is the same as like these people's lives and 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 the castle kind of also represents their lives so, and it's crumbling and the rose is wilting so when the rose is gone then like they should be wiped out and but it's when not. the rose is gone like like, like the they castle kind of, is still kind of crumbling away it's well no, 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 no they kind of away. like like endorse this theory by saying that like when the rose is dead and it's all wilted away the people all become the inanimate objects. And stop moving completely. And, and die. They die. They just straight up die. Everyone dies. Yeah. It's like, geez, this is actually more morbid than it really needs to be. And each person dies one at a time. It's yeah, like, okay. This movie, the, the whole end fight scene was... Garbage. Terrible, especially compared to the original. Yeah. It's like, Beast... We'll talk about Beast later, because we haven't touched on him at we all. We haven't touched on him at all. But, yeah, he's just, like, leaping around the castle, and they're like, Oh, there's Belle! I'll go over there now and then get shot seven times and die. No, instead they have Belle fight Gaston, yeah. like, a couple of different times, which just is weird. Mm-hmm. Like It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The scene was a lot more intimidating when it was... You know, a also, beast and also, a hunter one fighting I, each other. One thing I noticed is they couldn't have a thunderstorm because it's perpetual winter here. Oh. So they're just fighting at night now. Yeah. There's, like, no... The castle isn't on fire. Or there's, like, a thunderstorm going on. No, it's just night. It there's was not, like, a way bl- less dramatic. Oh, yeah. There's, but like, no But they still, no like, try and take so many things from the original. Like, Gaston rips a part of the castle off. Oh, like, he ripped that off real easy. He rips it off so It's just, easy. like, take one hand and, like, pulls off this and whole like, thing. like... Beats the beast with it. Like, wait, if that came off so easily, it should do, like, no damage to the beast. Because right. the beast is a beast. Yeah. Oh, it's talking about fight scenes. When the beast fights the wolves off of Bell. Well, well, just, just wait. Okay. Just wait. We're still talking about <laughs> the ending. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. He's... So, so okay. So, this terrible fight scene goes down. This just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth if you know the original and then you know Beast is dying and Belle's there and she's like don't leave me and Emma Watson's giving a bad performance and the Beast is giving a bad performance because like, he's, he's just a dead puppet now yeah because he's he's not even do like he's not even original, acting like he's you dying can, like feel that he's dying he's here like, he's just at like least, at least I got to see you one last time. Like, he's heavily breathing. Here, he can't move correctly. His eyes cannot stay focused. It's right. Like you see that in the animation in the original. This one, he's just like... He's looking oh. straight at Belle. He's looking he's straight like, at her. He just looks completely calm. And he's like, at least I got to see you one last time. And then he just, like, flops back 
two centimeters and he's dead. Right, and it's like they do the thing where his eyes don't close and he's supposed to be staring vacantly, but it just makes him look be- like they because of the way it's him. yeah, because of the way of the, the way it's shot, it just makes it look like he's just like like in a coma or something. It doesn't look like he's dead. Yeah, like he should have flopped more or something. Mm-hmm. But he just kind of like and then they cut. cut to the front of the castle where all the animate objects are like, oh no, this is bad, and now I'm like becoming still, and then one character dies. And then the other character that's related to them in some way is like, no, don't leave me, I, I, and then they die. Mm -hmm. And then like another character, Mrs. Potts like, have you seen my son? Oh, where is my son? And she fades away. And then Chip's like flying out of the air on his scooter again. <laughs> Chip almost like shatters. Gets wrecked. Yeah, like, and dies then, permanently. Like, he dies flying through the air, so his like saucer shatters on the ground. But the, luckily, so the like the, coat rack the coat rack catches, catches him and puts him on the rack, like puts him next to Mrs. Potts, and then he sets up and dies. And then uh, Cogsworth Cogsworth is like, I like I can't. Talk, you're, you're my best friend, and honor serving with you. And then he dies, and Lumiere is the last one to die. And he's like, "No, the honor was all mine, and I die in a flourish because I am Lumiere, and everyone loves Lumiere." <laughs> oh, that's one thing we haven't even talked about. Lumiere has two models in this movie. Yet again, we'll get to this. But the fact that they. Okay, and and this is a long scene. Like, like essentially, we described the whole scene to you. It takes at least that long if to get not, through this whole scene. Like another thirty seconds. And then they cut back to Belle and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Like, if that is not telling enough that they had to cut in the middle of one of the most emotional scenes. Like we just we just watched the original Beauty yeah, and the Beast. Yeah, and I was and tearing I, up. I got emotional too watching it. I'm like, man, I think I've I've cried at this movie so many times. I am still like, just I'm like tearing up at this. Death. <gasps> this it's is like this so is emotional good. shit. But no, it's like they're oh, the Belle and the Beast sucked in this, and they had zero chemistry. So in order to give the audience anything to feel feel sad sad about about. they had to cut in the middle of that scene and show the characters you actually like had a little you kind of liked all dying very gruesome deaths and then they cut back to Belle and the Beast and they're like okay let's wrap this up (laughs) yeah and then they're like I I love you my jaw literally dropped at the fact that they cut in, like <laughs> during that scene I was like are you shitting me oh and uh, so at the end of this there okay I'm gonna mm-hmm. no we're still in the death I'll keep going on the death but it's like I love you and instead of the rose giving the power to bring the beast back to life no guess who's back Martha or Agatha or whatever her name is beggar woman beggar woman shows up oh she was the enchantress the whole time no seriously I'm not joking it's that stupid she doesn't say anything. She just shows up, looks at them on the floor, sobbing. And no one acknowledges. No one acknowledges that no one she's acknowledges there. No one that she exists in this scene at all. She just shows up, and then she's like, "Flower petals, go!" And she doesn't say it. She just like brings her hand up, and then golden flower magic brings the beast back and repairs the castle and everything. Mm-hmm. It's and then she disappears. Yeah, she's just gone. Yeah. That's it. It's just getting it. It's just more padding. More padding. She and more, like, just, like, they feel like they have to add, yet again, just adding in stuff because Belle and the Beast have zero chemistry in this movie. They just add this in for, like, some kind of twist. Oh. So the audience can be a like, twist. <gasps> she was the enchantress the entire time. No shit. Which I, mean, I actually cares? call. Oh, yeah. It's like earlier i'm like who is that and you're like it better not be fucking bell's mom because that's a subplot that is stupid and does nothing 
And I'm like, no, I'm going to bet she turns out to be the Enchantress at the end. And what do you know? It was the Enchantress. And I'm not saying if you can predict story beats, that makes them bad. But it was just done poorly. Yeah, it's like this was just completely unnecessary. It it added nothing. It did nothing. In in fact, it just shows, like, it just continues to take away from what was good in the original, which you're trying so hard to remake Mm -hmm. scene by scene. Okay. Yes. Now I want to talk about Lumiere specifically. Okay. We've already talked about they have, like, we don't like the designs of these animated characters, but I don't, Daniil didn't even really realize this until I explained it to her, I don't think. Nah. Um, At the beginning of the film, he's an ornate candelabra. Because he's an ornate candelabra. His design is so muddled that I was confused because it's like, wait, no, he's he's a candelabra in this scene, and then in the next scene, he suddenly has legs. Yeah. Okay. It's like, he's an ornate candelabra that just looks like a candelabra with kind of a face, sort of. But he's that way for, like, the first few scenes. And then we see no transition. The next thing we see is a golden man, like seriously, just a small man in a suit made completely of gold with candle on his head and for hands. Mm -hmm. He looks completely different from the actual candelabra. It made no sense. It was super stupid. And they're super lazy. Super lazy. It's like the only reason you did this is so that like animating him would be easier. Animating him would be easier because you don't want to animate a candelabra. You can't do things with a candelabra. Did you look at the original? They did a lot with that candelabra. You guys are just lazy. Well, and Cogsworth too was like... (sighs) So boring. So they 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 cut cut out a lot of what Cogsworth did in the original and... He's um, the only one that got like some okay lines in this movie too that were new. Yeah, and he, he, was he had some jokes. awesome lines in the original. Yeah, in this version, he just kind of told and a couple jokes. he had some jokes. great animation, too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, like... <sighs> just so... It, that was a character that was... So just, lifeless. It's like, if you wanted to make a gay character in this movie, why didn't you make it Cogsworth? Yeah. I mean, that just... It writes itself right there. Boom. He's He likes Lumiere. Yeah, and then just make and just Lumiere doesn't want to, bi. And doesn't want to admit it. And yeah, Lumiere is like a bi guy. He just... A bi guy. <laughs> a bi guy. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, it's like that's... that's I, I've yeah. seen so many memes and like people commenting on that a lot. But I like, I, I so agree. Yeah. It's like, why bother making LeFou... The gay character. The gay or character. Or the only gay character. Right, when... Like... There's, There's other characters that are so easy to do. And would be more memorable and more of a positive message. Yes. And that that's just, not just a butt of a joke. Right. Because that's what LeFou is. He's supposed to be the butt of jokes. Mm-hmm. And if you make the gay character the butt of the jokes, it what does that say? <laughs> I mean, whatever. I don't even yeah. want to talk about it. Because okay. it's just yeah. not... Not needed. We got a lot more movie to like, get through. Like... <laughs> They add this, but it doesn't mean anything. No. It's If you're someone who's going to this movie because you're like, well, I want to support Disney making this move on making a character... Um, gay. Gay, and like, like they say he's gay, and it's like, it's really obvious he's gay. Don't bother, because it doesn't do anything. Like, no. It's like, him being gay adds nothing. Yeah. Like, he gets Except a couple of short, really, really short gay, like, bits. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. And they're not even, like... But I, I will say I liked his performance. Yeah, I will say he's one of those few... He was one of the few char- like, few actors in this movie that actually seemed to be enjoying themselves. Granted, he's one of the few characters that they actually changed quite a bit from the yes. original. Yeah. It's like... Him and kind of Gaston seem to enjoy themselves in this movie. But, okay, let, let's get back to Gaston, because Gaston was really confusing. They made oh, him a yeah. war hero, or like it's, some war hero, a war hero, and yet instead of a, a hunter, hunter. Which means that the final climax at the end of the movie, it's not a hunter and a beast fighting it out. It's a war guy just killing this monster because he wants the girl for no reason. It, mm-hmm. It's not very well done. And he's, 
like, like we said before, he's really wishy-washy in his motives. But, you know, the point of Gaston in the original movie was that he had, like, absolute control over the townspeople. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the mob song, he... Like, there's build-up in the mob song where he's like, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you had feelings for this monster. And the reason Gaston in the original movie wants to go after the beast is because he's a hunter and because he's jealous. In this movie... It's all about, oh, you love another guy? No, 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 no. Bell shows everyone the beast through the mirror, which the mirror has like this t- is like this tiny, tiny little because picture it's like of this the beast. Rusty little. Yeah, because this like around the sides of it, it's all like decayed, and so the picture of the beast is really tiny. And she like holds it up, and people and are just like, <gasps> like even though it'd be if- like a brown smudge because. People don't really have glasses back then. I'm sure their eyes were all terrible, so they wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, and the picture they show of the beast is he's just, like, looking straight out through the mirror, and he's, like, got this sort of sad, like... It's super zoomed out and stuff. Yeah, it's, like, it's it's a bust instead of just his face. Yeah. And, like, then there's, like, a little roar that comes from it, but it's nothing, like... Was there? I don't even remember I think there was, like, just a little something, because I was like, okay, (laughs) where's the part where they're going to be scared? And then I'm like, okay, I hear a little bit of a roar coming from it. (laughs) But (laughs) but then, like, Gaston grabs the mirror, and he's like, this is a monster! And then he basically goes straight into the song... Without no... With no build-up. With no build-up, and then later in the song, he's like pushing Bell into the insane asylum cart, and she's and he's like, then he says, "If I didn't know any better, I'd say you had feelings for this," which means his jealousy about it is coming second, because at least Gaston in the original had, like, he wasn't a smart guy, but he knew how to manipulate people. Oh yeah. And in this one, it just feels like he's flying by the seat of his pants because he can barely control himself in, mm-hmm. like, his urges. In yeah. fact, there's a whole scene building up that fact earlier before he ties up Maurice in the woods. Where he's, like... Where LeFou is trying to, like, calm him down. Dude, calm down. Don't just, like, kill the man. And then he decks him and leaves him for dead anyways. Right, but LeFou, like, says, like, oh, remember the widows or something, and, like, Gaston, like, calms down. He's like, it's weird. It's weird and bizarre, and I won't dwell, delve into it anymore. But, yeah. and and then the, the way the townspeople react to Gaston is it's... also so bizarre, because at least in the original movie, they basically, like, worshipped this guy. They were 100% behind him all the time, forever. Mm-hmm. But in this, like, sometimes the townspeople seem really aggressive towards Gaston. Sometimes they seem really supportive of Maurice, even. And mm-hmm. then sometimes they're like, oh, no, Gaston is the greatest. But then other times it kind of seems like they're only saying that. Because everyone else is saying Because it. everyone else is saying it. it like, or, or, like, they're being condescending towards him. Yeah, it's really hard to read in this movie. Mm -hmm. It's not well done. So, I feel like that's pretty much everything. No. Well, that's pretty much everything except for getting into... Belle and the Beast. The Belle and the Beast, specifically. Is there anything else before we get to them? Not that I can think of right now. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about, Let's talk about Beauty the, and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast now. I mean, we've only spent like the past, I don't know, hour and a half, <laughs> something like that. I'm not sure how this long this thing's going to be. It's going to be quite long. Mm-hmm. But we spent a good time talking about everything else in this movie. Let's talk about the main characters. The title characters. Oh, oh boy. my god. I mean, we've already touched on how Belle is completely unconvincing and phoning everything in. Oh, another thing about that first song. I be- like, I'm perfectly o- fine accepting that in musicals, people just burst out in song and dance, and that's just the thing that happens. Right. Of course. One thing I can't believe is that someone is singing part of the song, but then... You show no indication that she is now distracted and not paying attention to the song as people continue to sing and mock her 
as she walks through them, kind of not looking at them, sort of. She, because at the end of the song is when, like, the huge climactic thing where everyone's like, she really is a funny girl. Not a beauty, but a funny girl. She really is a funny girl. That bell. And, like, she's just walking through the middle of these people. She's not reading her book. She just kind of got, like, a... A dazed expression a on A dazed her face. expression where I can only assume Emma Watson's like, am I really doing this? <laughs> where she's like, I don't remember what they did in the animated original, so I'm just gonna smile and march towards my next She wasn't marker. even smiling. She was just kind of grimacing. Just like, I'm just walking to the place the yeah. script tells me to walk to. Yeah, it's really awkward and it's like how is she not listening or at least reacting to people talking about her it's really weird because in the original because in the original the story makers had the foresight to know that if people are talking if if a person's singing loudly about you you're probably going to hear it so what do they do bell is reading her book completely absorbed uh, completely absorbed in her book and, you know, if you're a bookworm, you've been there. And, you know, and she's blocking them out. She's not listening to them. She's in her own world. In fact, which at the end of the inclu- song... Like, which makes her weirder to them. Yeah. So she's, you know, it, it fits her character. It makes sense for the song. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for the world. Like... And, like, even <sighs> at the end of the song, they acknowledge the fact that they're singing about her because she, like actually stops and looks up from her book. She's just like, wait, are people, people singing about me? And everyone's just like, oh, nope, nope, don't look at me. They right, and about she like business. turns around to like look back at them and they're like, oh, she noticed us. <laughs> but no, here, Belle's like still like waving at people. <laughs> like, it, like essentially still just be like, hi. And they're like, Belle, really? she really is a funny girl. <laughs> like, yep, yeah, that's me, cool. <laughs> oh. oh, and I just got to say that the interaction between Belle and Maurice is not good in this movie. It, it, I don't know if it really feels realistic. They have very few lines. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of lines in the original. No, but they cut out all of, like, half of Belle's lines from that scene. I thought the, I thought the first scene where they were together, like, in their own house, mm-hmm. I thought that was fine. Belle doesn't speak. For, like, the longest time. Yeah, I, was like, I mean... She just, like, grimaces through the whole thing. I, I... I don't know. It's really weird. Okay, so... We've already, like... The filmmakers of this movie want to make sure that we know that Belle is a strong character. She's an independent woman. She does her own thing. People think she's weird. Obviously, we've already cut out the part where she reads books and cuts pe- like doesn't listen to people, so we can't use that anymore. How else are we going to show that Belle is f- a forward-thinking, do-it-yourself lady? Mm-hmm. She's going to invent an impossible laundry machine, just like Mowgli did in the Jungle Book remake, where he made stupid inventions all the time. <laughs> I... Like, and yet, this never pays off. This never pays off. She does it once. The townspeople harass her for it. Harass her for it. Not even... No, they don't harass her for her weird laundry machine. They harass her for teaching words to another girl. Yeah, for teaching another girl how to read. And so they, they then trash her invention and, like, throw her laundry in the dirt. Which she then never takes home. No, she just kind of picks it up and walks away. Well, she, like... Puts it back in a basket and then walks home. Or, I don't even (laughs) remember what happens to it. It's like, okay, that was a kind of pointless scene other than the fact that, oh, women aren't supposed to read in these days and stuff. Right, but they decided to add this whole washing machine thing. Add this whole washing machine thing, which never, ever pays off ever again in the whole movie. She never invents another thing. Another thing I really disliked about the changes they made to Belle was that they immediately, when Belle gets to the castle and she finds her father, she's like, I'm going to find a way to break out. And then, like, Maurice is sent on his way back home. Mm -hmm. And she immediately tries to escape. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, well, that's a good thing. 
It's not, though. That's not the original character. Uh, well, okay. Original character okay, yeah. aside. All right. She made it a speaks, promise. It speaks volumes about Belle's original character mm -hmm. that she made a promise and she was going to keep it. Yes. In this movie, Belle is making promises and is like, nope. Who cares? I, yeah, it's like the first scene we see of her is she's like trying to like tie a bunch of bed sheets together. Yeah, to when she climb gets out to, the window. Yeah, when she gets to her room, she's like trying to tie a bunch of bed sheets together so she can escape. But then she no stops. One's, no one's like locked her door or anything. No, she can just walk out of the castle. Like if if she honestly wanted to escape, like they really want you to believe that she's trying to escape because she's a strong woman and she's. Not gonna let somebody imprison her. She can just walk out the door. Yeah, just walk straight out the door. The beast is doing something else. Like he's fucking like, off. He doesn't even realize she's out of the cage at this moment because, wow, is that different? We'll talk about the beast later, though. Yeah, and just, his just in a little bit. But yeah, it's like the changes they make to her don't make sense and lessen, like lessen who she is as a character. Yeah, it's like uh, she's just become more of a damsel ditz. in a like, ditz which is not what the original bell is mm-hmm it's like yeah it's like they've tried to modernize her and yet it, it made her worse it made her weaker in my opinion yeah she was not as good of a character so the beast oh and her okay, go ahead. stockholm syndrome like oh that like, is okay, terrible people joke about how beauty and the beast is about stockholm syndrome Oh, uh, excuse shit. me, this is way worse in this movie. It's, like, instantaneous. Yeah. <laughs> and completely unbelievable in every way. Well, it's it's just, like, straight up. <laughs> like, okay. The, okay. I've already said it before, Belle and the Beast share zero chemistry. Mm-hmm. In like, this movie. Yeah, in, in this movie. And... They have, like, one scene where the Beast doesn't do anything to charm her over. It's the servants going, like, oh, well, you know, he's ha his dad was mean, so you should try and be nicer to him. And then, like, from that moment on... She's she, like, okay, she's I'll be like, nice to him. Okay. And, That's yeah, it. it just feels so Stockholm syndrome -y. Okay. We've talked a lot about Belle. We've talked about everyone except for, really, the Beast. Because he's really hard to talk about because he's not in this movie a lot a lot and when he is it's poorly done so it just makes you wish that they tried to copy the original beast more actually yeah because so we've already talked about how he was stalking maurice in the garden for some reason mm -hmm. but we don't get any lines out of him there the first lines we have is of him talking to bell okay hold on sorry this is a really weird tangent off to the side mm -hmm. castles have spiral scare staircases in their towers oh, yeah. obviously i'm not going to say that they have to be left facing spiral staircases or right facing spiral staircases but, but you can't mind. switch halfway through a tower because <laughs> bell runs up a staircase to where her dad is being held and it's a spiral staircase that goes up clockwise mm-hmm but when she arrives at his cell, she comes out of a counterclockwise staircase, which was immediately above the staircase she just entered, which means where was this landing that turned around? Because <laughs> this makes no sense. And it happens again in a different tower later in the movie when Beast is singing a really stupid song. I didn't even bother mentioning it to you, but it happens again. <laughs> Anyways... The Beast. Maybe French castles all did this. Uh-huh. <laughs> I believe that. They're just being really true to French architecture. No, I think it was just an oversight to the set designers. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so Belle immediately runs into the castle and finds Maurice immediately. Mm -hmm. Which is rather fast of her. Um, but the Beast is just like, get out of my castle. And she's like, I'll take his place. Just, like, no build-up at all. She's just like, I'll take his place. Right, right. It's it's hilarious. Okay, they've padded this movie out so much, and yet... 
they the times where the animated movie took time to like slow down and build tension in a scene they just this rush movie through it. just decides to like book it <laughs> oh you've seen this part already let's just go on to the next scene where nothing happens and we'll just pad it for forever right it's like what are you doing what are you doing and so like the first two lines of the movie are like i like i don't i'm i don't know if they just skipped over whole sections of this conversation because they did but it's like what are you doing get out of this castle he's imprisoned here and she's like i'll take his place and just like you would do that come into the light it's like, wait, we're already at this line? This comes at, like, yeah, the end of this conversation. Like, Beast has a lot of his same lines, but without the delivery and the emotion that the original animation or had. Or the build-up to or them. Or the build-up. Or where, anything. Where, you know, it's like, in the original, the Beast is, is angry. He's, like... Glowering, intimidating, glowering, scary intimidating. guy. And then she's like, take me instead. And, and then, then he like, and then you can see the Beast's face, and he's, he's like... He's puzzled and confused. And, you know, and he, he has a moment of out and he's like looking and, and you can see him thinking and he's like you would do that in this verse she's like you, you would, would take his place you would take his place Mur. Mur. <laughs> 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 and so in the end she's like fine i won't take his place can i just talk to him for a minute and he's like sure and then she like, opens the door and he's like when next time this door closes, it won't open. Again. It won't open again. So and then she just stands outside the door. She like runs in and talks with her father. And then she's like, "I'll find a way to escape." And then she shoves him out where he falls. And I'm pretty sure he hits his head his, on the wall. Hits his head. It's like, God, you should like, jeez, Belle, calm down. You like, mortally wound your father. It's like I thought you wanted to help. Also, him. I don't know if you noticed, but when the beast is dragging him down the stairs, he's. Thumping down every single step as they go. Oh, I know. They make a big deal about him being like, thump, 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 thump. I was like, is that supposed to be him, the beast, making the steps? Or is that Maurice's head clacking <laughs> against every single <laughs> step? It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Because it was really <sighs> noticeable and, and Really off. weird and odd. So... Because in this version, the beast is a tall, thin guy. Like, yeah. he's not a big, hulking beast like he is in the animated. He's not a beast. He's just still, a furry guy. Yeah, but he still add like, these thump, thump, thump sounds. Like, yeah. he's really heavy when he's, he's not. Really not. <laughs> so, at this point in the original animated film, the beast, beast. will comes back to the cell, and mm -hmm. he's like, I will show you to your room. And she's like, but... But I thought, like, implying she'd stay there. And she's like, you want to stay here? Yeah. Well, do you, you want to stay you, in this? Are you an idiot? Do you want to want to stay in this tower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to want to stay in this tower? <laughs> in the original version of the Beauty and the Beast, there was an audio mess up. Where, where he says want to twice in a yeah, row. Yeah, it's like you can watch the original release. And do you want to want to? Do you want to want to stay in this tower? And then he, then he leads her to the new room. In this version, the beast is fucked off. He's perfectly fine leaving her stuck in this room. Mm -hmm. It's Lumiere that lets her out and sets her up with this new room. It's yeah, like, yeah. Lumiere breaks her out of her dungeon cell and he's like, oh, don't mind the master. He's just blowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you're going to eat with him in a little bit. Don't worry about it. Beast yeah. Yeah, knows Lumi nothing about Lumiere any of this. is the one who invites her to dinner. Yeah. And then. Like, the Beast goes to dinner like he does every day, and then he well, realizes there's another place set for him, set at the other end of the table. He's like, wait, wait, wait. what is this? Wait, wait, wait. And Lumiere is the one, <laughs> Lumiere or Cogsworth, because they've both joined up together to, like, take Belle to her new room. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that mention the West Wing. Yeah. The which, Beast at never point is like, you should never go to the first. Yeah, which Never go to the West Wing. Another, it's forbidden! Yeah. It's like, no. Just, they're just like, what West Wing? We don't have a West Wing. Oh, we only have one wing. It's the East Wing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like to call it the, the only wing. wing. It's yeah. like, that's a stupid joke. <laughs> also, why are you guys walking on the outside of the castle right now? I like, don't know. on the roof? I don't know. This Apparently, is... you've got to go outside to get to the East Wing. <laughs> it was weird and dumb. Um, but, but, but then, they, they but take... But then they shoot... Mm. Sorry. But then they take... <laughs> That scene from the Beast, which, you know, sets up a lot of their dynamic together because Belle questioned him and Beast doesn't like to be questioned and, mm -hmm. and you know, and all that 
and they take that scene away from him. And then, like you said, the beast comes back in, sees that there's another place set at the table. And he's, he's like, like, what? You invited her for dinner? And, and they're like, well, no shit. Don't you think you could try to, like, schmooze with her? You know, we're kind of under this curse. And he's like, what? Oh, <laughs> right. I'm an idiot. Because... <laughs> Somehow, this version of the Beast has not thought of the fact that he's under a perpetual curse that makes him miserable all the time, and there's a girl here that he could try to schmooze. And, I mean, they obviously make a, they make a joke here. Beast has zero, in, zero... Beast and Belle have zero initiative. Zero initiative, and Beast has no personality. I'm just gonna say that right now. There is nothing to this guy except for... Asshole. Kind of Asshole kind of pouty sometimes. Yeah, anyway... But they actually make a line around here is like, what, try to woo the prisoner? That sounds really stupid. Like, trying to make fun of the original movie. Like, and was, like, oh, <laughs> the original movie had Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> I just brought attention to the fact of a, of a commonly... Cri a common criticism of this movie and since I made a joke of it, I'm obviously above uh, it. Above oh. it in this movie. And it's, it's like, like no, no, you, you did just nothing. brought attention to it. Yeah, if you had not acknowledged it, it would have been fine. Yeah. So then they go up and they have the conversation where he's outside the door and like, you will come down to dinner with me or you'll not eat or something. Except it's just Yet done again. so half assed compared to the original. <sighs> yeah, it, and I I I hate saying it all the time, but it's just like... there's There was no point. It's just like, well, if you don't want it to be like the original, then don't say that it... Like, then don't... Like, I, I know what you guys are thinking. It's like, if you didn't want it to be like the original, then don't complain when it's not like the original. But the thing is, is they're still using the exact same script, mm -hmm. the exact same, like, framing of shots. Yeah. It's just all done worse. Yeah, it's like... If you want to be your own thing, be your own thing. And Don't I, okay, and I this is a perfect moment to go into this, because mm -hmm. I didn't get into this earlier, is that I have no problem with Disney doing remakes of fairy tales and stuff. Yeah. Like, even The yes. Jungle Book mm -hmm. is like, Disney could have done this remake where they did the original story of The Jungle Book, or did their own spinoff of The Jungle Book. But instead, they have to make callbacks to the animated original, which makes it so that the movie cannot stand on its own. No, you have to know the original that they're trying to do a copy of. Right. But it's not as good. And Beauty and the Beast is a fairy tale that when Disney animated it in the late 80s, they took a lot of liberties with it. Mm-hmm. I mean... Just go back and read the original. The original Beauty and the Beast story is weird and bizarre, and it's amazing they were able to make an adaptation of it at all. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> there's no good way to tell this story, and yet somehow they did it. Yeah. So, in that respect, I don't blame these filmmakers for taking the lazy route and just taking what Disney did right and doing it again. But and it's yet also at the incredibly time, lazy. it's so lazy. Because... It's like you could have done so many other things. This fairy tale has been around forever. You could have yeah. done anything else. But no, you just decided to make the same movie. That's only like 25, 26 years old. Something like that. At it's this not point, very old. It's not like Cinderella or The Jungle Book where it's, you know, been sitting around long enough where people can make a different adaptation of it. Yeah. And then they're going to be doing The Lion King here pretty soon. Oh. And... Flames <laughs> on, the, on, the, on, on the side, side of my, of my face. face. Breathing. 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 <laughs> but, white hot anger on that. <laughs> but it's just, I don't mind them doing it as long as they're creative about it. And I was talking about this with you before we went into the movie. I'm like, so do you hate these Disney remakes more or the... Disney sequels they did in the in the late 90s early 2000s more and I and think after we both came to the conclusion I, that we would prefer if that Disney they, was still doing the Disney sequels over the Disney remakes because sequels at least you have to do something new 
Yeah. Yeah, even if you're using the exact same formula in the movie, you are you have a sequel of, like, like Little do, Mermaid Yeah, you have to is, do new characters. You yeah. have to do new things. You're not just At least doing the exact same thing. some of them were thing. passable, considering they were direct-to-DVD movies. Yeah. And they have an ounce of creativity poured into them. Yeah. <laughs> this thing has very little creativity put into it, in the story region especially. Yeah. And yet has more money. <laughs> yeah, which is dumped into it. Awful. <sighs> anyway, so back to the beast, we? though. Yeah. All the chain, like. So yeah, this whole scene with you will starve, mm-hmm. and then we go into be our guest, which is just as overly flamboyant as the original in different ways, and it turns into. Not they even... cut to black after Be Our Guest, which is so bizarre because in the original movie, that transitions perfectly to Lumiere and Cogsworth taking Belle on a tour because Belle wants to explore the no, castle. No, they didn't. No, I'm saying in the original. No, that's they didn't. What... Yes. No, they did not. Or if right after the song, they cut to black, but then they cut to her in the chair clapping and like applauding them and like, all right, off to bed. And she's like, but I couldn't possibly. And then they, like, talk well, about going to... I'm, I'm, but yeah. I'm saying it segues right into that. Mm-hmm. You, you should know what I meant. Okay. But, yeah, like, it segues, segues perfectly into that. And then Belle, like, is able to use her wit and her charm to trick Lumiere and Cogsworth to go off towards the library while she heads up to the West Wing. She in does this, not do that in this version. In this one, it cuts to black... And then Mrs. Potts and Belle are walking, are, going, are, are walking around in the castle, and, and Mrs. Like, Potts is like, now, Belle, make sure you go to bed. Don't go anywhere else. Just go right to I mean to it. Bed. Don't you dare go to the West Wing. I'm just going don't, to leave you on your own now. Just make I'm just sure you don't do anything else. You. Just don't do anything else. Even though it's been established, Mrs. Potts can get up there yeah. and get up into her room, but they have this sh- scene shot as if like, oh, well, Mrs. Potts can't get up there, so she just has to trust Belle to go up to her room alone. Mm-hmm. But no, they've already established that that doesn't work. <laughs> like, that's not a good excuse. Yeah. But So then Belle is like, ha yeah, right, I'm not going back to my room, and goes up to the West Wing. It was <laughs> it's just so, so poorly, poorly set up, considering and... that the animated movie handed it to you on a silver platter and was like, here, this is a perfect segue, why didn't you do this, mm-hmm. idiots? Okay, one thing I want to say really quick about Be Our Guest, the only thing I'm going to say about it is, it was fine. But, randomly, near the end, it turned into just a straight-up Dolly film, or Bollywood film, where, like, an Indian dance sequence and the Taj Mahal of food. Mm-hmm. It was so bizarre to me, but to Neil... really random. Yeah, I was like, why? I, Cogsworth point, has a, I'm like, turban like, on, and... Whatever. It's like, Cogsworth gets a turban on, and he bursts out of the Taj Mahal, and, like... Oh, and also there's a running weird. joke throughout the thing that Belle never gets to eat any food. Yeah, but then at the end, it's fine. Yeah. It's like, sure, in the original, they don't really show that she eats, but it's also not... It's implied that she does. And so it's not like even a thing. Yeah. But in this one, like, the servants and stuff are purposefully, like, taking food away from her and so she like, can't eat. So and she's, it's just, so in this version, it's like not like she's trying to enjoy the song. She's like, just give me the goddamn food. I'm hungry. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Stop it. Type of thing. It's like, this is really mixed messages here. Because uh-huh. half the time she's smiling and happy, but the other time she's like, no, no come back with the food. Come back. Right. No. But it, it's, it's yet again, it's like they're trying to make a jab at the original, but in doing so, they've made their movie not make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes. By calling attention to something that didn't need to be called attention to. So, yeah. At this point, the Beast and the Bell have had... The Beast and the Bell. <laughs> the Beast and the Bell have had two interactions. One of which was, you're not going to stay in this castle. Oh, I guess you're staying in this castle, whatever. Also, and then cut to, you'll eat with me or you'll never eat. Right. And that's the only interaction they've had. Mm-hmm. The very next interaction they they have in this movie is, Belle goes up to the West Wing, which the West Wing is immaculate. Is in it's pristine condition. Pristine condition. The Beast 
apparently doesn't throw tenter tantrums and destroy all of his furniture in this movie. Even though he does. Even though he does. They show him doing it, but I guess they just don't want to muddy up their set, so... Yeah, because they wanted to look pretty. So... It's um, just yet again ignoring good visual storytelling techniques yeah. for no reason. Yeah. So the bell... The bell. <laughs> just calling her the bell. <laughs> the bell. I mean, yeah, it's not the true bell. So this is just the bell. <laughs> the bell finds the enchanted flower. In this version, she doesn't like lift the glass case off of it or anything. She just kind of looks at it. And, and then, then the, the beast, beast freaks bursts, out. Freaks out. Like, what did you do? What are you doing? Get out of here. And it's like, what? She, she did nothing. I mean, at least in the original, she it actually, gave reason for the beast to be freaked out. Because she, she, like, lifted the thing off it. And she was about ready to, like, grab the, the rose. And we have no idea what that would have done at that point. But right. In this version, she doesn't even... Like, she reaches again, out to maybe touch the glass. Yeah, and yet again, there's, like, this this build-up in the original animated version where the beast swoops down and, like, puts the glass back on there. And, and there's, like, this very protectively. Sh- and there's, like, this slow, like, as he's, like, protecting it, and he just, like, what slowly looks do? over at her. And then there's this build-up as he's just like, get out! And this, for- and this one, he's just immediately, like, pounces down on her, and she's like, what did you do? get out of here! Get out! And then she runs away. He's like, go! Get on! Get out of here! Mm-hmm. I'm angry! Yeah. Obviously! Can't you tell? Get out! His emotions are, like, so bland. Bland, and bland in this version. He, he's... This is the third scene we've seen, or, sorry, fourth scene we've seen with the Beast in this movie. He's developed... No character. He is. He's not given. He's just he's grumpy. Not, he's not given the moments he is. Yeah, in, in the, original. the original to like express himself. Yeah, and I mean, it, it just shows how Glenn Keane is just a master actor. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know, Glenn Keane animated The Beast. He was the lead animator of Pocahontas. He was the lead animator of. Um, John Silver and Tarzan, um, he did a ton of work for on Tangled. Tangled. I mean, this guy is a legend in the animation world. And, yeah, he's one and of those guys that beast, is still alive. Yeah, and the Beast is one of the best, best acted performances I've ever seen. I mean, there's just so much emotion and you even when the beast doesn't say anything you can see so much on his face what he's thinking and in this it just makes it so clear this movie is stepping through the paces it's just yeah stepping through the paces because the beast can't it can't act as well as this animated character this is our high school musical of the beauty and the beast <laughs> The only difference is we have a really big budget (laughs) for pretty sets and costumes. Yeah. Um, And then... After that is when she gets chased out and has to fight off the wolves. The wolves. Okay. In the original version of this movie, I I know we keep doing this where it's in the original, but Mm -hmm. that's what we're doing here. We have to compare it to the original to point out a lot of the flaws of this one. Right, because the original just is did it well. Very well. In the original version, when the beast comes in and starts fighting off the wolves, he's like rolling around with these wolves all over him, like tossing them and like just going crazy, which is yeah, really hard to animate. It's an intense scene. Yeah. In this version, a wolf jumps on him and then he lays on the ground kind of like, oh, I yeah, got a wolf he, on like, me. Yeah, he like tussles with it. Just a little bit and then he like punches one and then kind of throws he, another. Yeah, he does like the same thing over and over again where it's like he throws a wolf and, and then, then he it hits one. a tree and then he throws another wolf and it hits a tree. It's so boring. Bland. <laughs> it's like, this is an intense fight scene. Why is this... There's nothing here. Mm-hmm. I don't care about any of this. And then yet again, they like have the same shot. It looks like they they have the exact same shot of like Belle getting ready to, to like get on the horse, get right on the away, horse, and then but she... she has this look like, oh, I can't just leave him here, even though they've the... had like zero, zero positive interactions with each other. Like 
or, and or like zero chemistry with each other. Zero chemistry with each other, and like they've seen each other's faces twice by this point in the film. Mm -hmm. Twice, only two times have these characters interacted, and we're like over halfway through the film, I'd say at this point. Mm -hmm. It's like this is ridiculous. Yeah. And okay, again, in the original, the beast obviously got hurt fighting these wolves because he like teeters and then collapses yeah and he like passes out in, in this, this version one, he just kind of like lays on the ground like oh i'm he, hurt he, and he oh. looks like sad he gives bell like, like a puppy dog face like oh oh you want to leave me would you <laughs> i'm all hurt <laughs> like instead of this one he just looks really pathetic yeah and like <laughs> guilt trips bell into taking him back to the castle yeah and then Immediately after this is when they have this scene of, like, yelling at each other for, like, you shouldn't have done this. Look, you shouldn't have done this. And then and it's just he beat, beat for beat. Beat for beat. And then they stop halfway through that conversation. The beast rolls over and apparently passes out or falls asleep because Bell goes to the foot of his bed. And him and the... Yeah, and they don't get to fit. Like, they do that whole scene, beat for beat, but they don't do the end, which is important, where, where they, they apologize. apologize to each other. They don't do that part. Instead, Belle walks to the foot of his bed and starts talking loudly with all of his servants about how terrible the beast is of a person. While he's right there... In his bed. And oh, by the way, he can't lay in his bed properly because the they, way they designed his horns, <laughs> his horns swoop back, so he can't l lay in his bed. So instead, they just try and, like, have him... Conveniently hide where the horn would be. Well, or they have him, like, lift his head up Forward. awkwardly. Oh, it's, it's terrible it's looking. It's like, why... If, you know, if in you, the original, he's just in an armchair... You could have had your character design sit there. Why didn't you think around this? Yeah. It's like, it's not like you were doing it to be loyal to the original. You did it because you think that your adaptation needs him lying in a bed, but you didn't think it all the way through because your character can't lie in a bed. <sighs> okay, from here... I don't remember how they get there. I think Bell is just sitting around somewhere reading a book. No, no. What happens is she's like, yeah, she's, she she's been she's, tending to him. She's been tending to him for no reason, really. For days, because for days, because he's a big baby. Bitch. <laughs> I was gonna say bitch. <laughs> just like laying in bed, like, oh, I'm so wounded and things. Right. But uh, she's like sitting there, like reading Shakespeare. And then he just rolls over and, like, finishes finish, finishes the line. He's like, you know Shakespeare? I was like, I had a very expensive, expensive education. education. <laughs> and then he's like, but you've read books and stuff. He's like, uh, of course. And then it immediately cuts to them walking into the library. No buildup or yeah, anything. Yeah, he, he... And he's better now. Just... Yeah, he gets better immediately, and the only reason he takes Belle to the library, it's which is such an important scene in the original... It's just to boast about how many books he has. It's, yeah, it's just for him to show off and be like, and he's such an asshole about it. Yeah. He's like... Blah, 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 blah. And they try and make it like a cute moment it's where like, she's have like... Have you really read all these books? She's like, well, no. Some of them are in Greek. It's like... What kind of line is that? <laughs> and and then she's like, uh, are you making a joke? Are you actually making a joke? And then and he like, gives like a doofy uh, smile. Uh, and it's like, oh, this is... <laughs> this is awkward and bad. Okay, just for context from the original movie, near the beginning, of the, in the song Bell at the beginning, she returns the book and then she oh, picks out yeah. another one. And the bookkeeper, who doesn't really exist in this version of the movie, he kind of does. He but says really. half of the lines. He, he says half the lines. But in the original, he's like, this one, but you've read it twice. And she's like, but it's my favorite. And then he's like, well, if you love it so much, it's then it's yours. yours. That, then it's yours. Specifically those words. So that later, uh, when the beast is sulking and trying to figure out how to win over Bell, which doesn't really happen in the new version at all, ever. Mm -hmm. um, 
In he's the, talking. He's with talking the, with the servants. They're like, "Give her a gift or something." And mm -hmm. he's like, "Well, what should I get her?" And then Lumiere's like, "Oh, I know, because earlier we were distracted because she said she wanted to see the library, which is how she got off the West Wing to begin with." Mm -hmm. Callbacks. So he sh gives the library to her as a gift. In this version, it's just kind of, "Oh yeah, there's a library here," because books. And we both like books, except we don't like the same kind of books, because I'm a man and I don't read romances. Blech. Yeah. Which is... That, this, that whole segment was just awkward. barf. It's like, well, he did that too. He yeah. went blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like... Oh, gosh. But but no, and then... They bond they, they over try, books. They try to have that same line that you were mm -hmm. talking about, the bookkeeper oh, having. Yeah. And then he's like, if you like it so much, then it's yours. But there was no build-up to this earlier in the movie, so this doesn't... Right, right, because in no... the original... Because in the original, they have that callback where it's, it's like... the exact same line. Mm -hmm. Where you remember that point, and you make the associations, like, this is important. Mm -hmm. In this version, it just kind of is only the one line once, and it just kind of exists. Mm -hmm. It's not major. And then he wanders off somewhere, and... Uh, Emma Watson just kind of sits there and squeeze like a little girl because like, books. Oh my god, it's a like, library. Really? <laughs> Belle wouldn't do that, I don't think. Like, I have a bit of composure, my god. Uh, and then they just have the mon. And then this is the point in the movie where they have the montage of them bonding. Sort of. Sort of. Except they just do it poorly. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, really. I mean, long story short, they do it all poorly. But another part that acting choice that bothered me a okay. lot was when they started into something there. Oh, they actually sing their lines. They Yeah, one, they actually sing their lines. and Instead of Belle's, just inner monologue. Yeah, and Belle's singing like the new and a bit alarming. Yeah. Who, who could have ever thought that this could be? And the entire time Emma Watson is singing this, she's like smiling and happy and just like, oh wow, isn't this just great? We're just getting along and wow, my Stockholm Syndrome is just really rushing in full force. Isn't it weird I'm falling for a beast man? Wow. Isn't that like... <sighs> bestiality? Bestiality? I was like, pedophilia, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Isn't that like I mean, bestiality or something? Whoa, isn't this woo? But no. But it's, it's just, just really so much weird. more goofier than the original because in the original, it's an inner monologue and Belle's like hiding behind a tree and she's. And she's like you, trying to piece this together. Well, and you can see her like she's fidgeting with her hands like, like she's thinking about it and she looks concerned she's like new no, and a bit alarming it's like i am i okay with this type of thing right In it's the new like, version, she's like yeah this is okay it's, it's like fine. wow what a magical vacation this turned out to Whoopee. be uh, there's just it's no emotional convincing. there's just no emotional depth like, like nobody thought about this or even considered the implication yeah. of what they're copying it's like you know the point of this movie is beauty and the beast and the love You've interest made between this the beauty weakest and part. the beast yeah and it's just the weakest part of the movie it's like i would forgive most of the other weird and bad things you did in this movie if it was convincing that these two characters actually liked loved and like you cared about cared each about, other. about each other but it's not it's they're like, they're honestly the weakest part of the film yeah it's like i would rather watch a whole movie about the animated pots and pans than i would about emma watson and beast, cgi beast boy beast boy yeah it's like I mean, he doesn't even look terribly intimidating or anything. He just needs to shave. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. Let's let's try and wrap this up. Mm. I have, I have I know two major complaints I want to bring up more about the beast. Okay. One, his song when Bell leaves. Oh yeah. So yeah, you know the dance scene. Which oh, which is dumb. The build up to that is, is nothing. Bad. It's nothing. nothing. Because okay, yet again, in the original, it's like. They, You're running they, out of time. You need to set it up and really go for it. Right, like both of them prep, and then there's like a montage where they, they have a nice dinner together. And then, you know, and Belle's like feeling 
like she wants to dance. And so, so then she, she initiates gets, the dance. She, then she initiates the dance. And then he shows her the beautiful ballroom, and you see the amazing CGI room that looks amazing. Still. Even still. Yeah. And. <sighs> but in this version, you just start with version, him in the bath, and he's like, I asked if she wanted to dance, and I didn't ever expect she would say yes. <laughs> and then they You'll just never like. You'll believe what happened next. <laughs> and then they just. Come down the stairs, look at each other, all lovey died and unconvincingly, mm -hmm. and then they dance. And then that's the end of the scene. Pretty much. I mean... And then there's, like, at this point in the original movie, Beast is like, holy shit, I really do love her. How do I tell her? And that's when they're like... Yeah, and, and Beast it. tries to tell like, her. Like, that's what this whole evening is about, him trying to figure out how to tell her. In mm -hmm. this version, no, that doesn't exist. He's not at that point. Yeah. Well, and in, in, in the original, he's like, are you... Like, he wants to first make sure, are you happy here? And he asks that, and she says yes, and then she looks away. And then that initiates the Beast to say, like, what's the matter? And, like, and stuff like that. In this one... He's like, he says something like, do you think you could be ha happy here? Yeah, it's worded weird. It's worded weird. And then she says, well, how can someone be happy if they aren't free? And then he's, he's the one who brings it's up, up her, her father. father. Yeah, not the other way around, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's weird and bizarre. And then he just lets her go and she runs off. It's like, yeah, they go through the same beats where she sees her father in distress and she's like, I gotta go save him. Except in this version, she just runs off in the yellow ball dress. Yeah, she's still wearing the dress. It's which is really so stupid. Weird. And as she's just slowly galloping on the horse the way, in this big yellow dress. Oh, and she takes a really long time getting out. And while this is happening, the beast is singing what I'm assuming is supposed to be some sort of power, power ballad. Because I'm sure it's supposed to be this long, forlorn song, but it's an upbeat, yeah, it sounds happy, sound, really happy, upbeat. triumphant song about how she's running away from him and he'll never see her again, but he'll keep her in his heart because he loves her. Yeah. And it's okay that I'm going to live by myself for the rest of my life because she knows she's never coming back, but it's okay because she's here in my heart. It's like, no. This needs to in be the, the low point of the this movie. This is the low point of the movie, not the happy triumphant, yes, I finally got rid of her. Because <laughs> what? that's what it feels like. I Yeah. In the original, it's like, this is the point in the movie where the beast is howling in anguish because he just let the love of his life out. Yeah. And she's never going to come back. Mm-hmm. And he's devastated for the rest of the movie. In this version, he's like, oh, it's kind of sad, but I'm also really happy for some reason, and it's weird and conflicting, and I don't understand. And right. he's just grumpy I've through the... I've suddenly, like, <laughs> solved all my... Like, I've solved my character arc through this song, even though we still have a third of the movie left to go. <laughs> yeah, and then, so when everyone attacks... He, in the original, he's still just devastating. He's like, and depressed. Let them come. I don't care if I die at this point and shit like that. In this version, he's just like, let them come. I'm grumpy or something, whatever. And so in the original, when uh, Gaston shoots him in the back, he like full on looks at him before he does it. And he's just like, do it. I, don't, I, don't I care. just don't care. But in this version, he's just like, okay. I guess we're doing this now or whatever. Mm. It's like, it's so half-assed and non-committal. Yeah, it, you just don't get the sense of defeat yeah, that the out beast, of the beast had. Because once he gets shot the first time, because he wasn't really expecting it like he was in the original, mm. he just starts hopping around on the rooftops trying to get away. It's weird and it's a bad climax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we already talked about the whole death sequence and everything. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, one of the, like, another huge iconic scene from that movie is when the beast floats up in the air and transforms crazy, back into a human. insane transformation. They, like, Cut. rush through it. And they, they like, put it. so many, like, pixel effects and stuff around can, him that you can't, can't see. see. And... <laughs> There's like whatever. He, yeah, he's back. Like, he's a human. Also, like, and then he never speaks. 
Yeah, it's like they, they copy the shots from the animated movie, but they put it on like times four fast forward and then add a ton of a shit ton Sparkles. of like sparkle effects. <laughs> yeah. And then when he turns into human beast, he doesn't speak. He's not like, Belle, it's me. Yeah. And Belle's like, it is, it is you, you or anything. Like in this they version, just you just like each look eyes. at each other for a really long time and then you just like uh, slowly, slowly, slow. Okay, now we're kissing or something. Yeah, it's really weird and awkward. It's supposed to be heartfelt, but there's no heart here. Yeah, because they've had zero chemistry together. The whole movie is like there's no chemistry. Oh, and then Emma Watson makes a jab, jab that's like, very "Can end. you grow a beard?" And he like growls, like has a yes. stock audio growl. Thrown yeah. In. Okay. There's another thing when everyone transforms back. They keep a part of them that was part of the antiques. Like, the dog still had, like, a... A, a fluffy ta- tail? A talus of a tail. Ta- yeah, a tassel. A tassel, for its yeah. Tail. And Lumiere, whenever he gets horny, like, the top of his smoke. head starts smoking. Yeah, and... And, it's, and for some reason, Cogsworth mustache is all we- whopper-jawed. Is it because he had, like, the clock... The clock hands were his mustache, but I, they were always pointed directly down. They were never, like, off at, at a kilt or, like, maybe he Maybe because a it's a clock and one is short and one is long. I, it, it, ma- it was really it stupid. It made no like, sense. It also, weird. oh, one other really stupid thing about that they tried to explain away through this curse is that everyone forgot oh, that this yeah. castle and the people inside it existed. Yeah, so because... So once the curse is broken, everyone's like... Oh my god, it's my I, wife and I remember like, You're the love of my life and like wait, we never acknowledged that these characters had anything to do with each other, which is kind of the point, but even like the There's there's a setup at the beginning of the movie where Belle talks to one of the townspeople and she's like, Do you remember? And he's like, No, I forget. And then later when everyone wow, was gets, that really what that was? That's what that was. And then he was the guy who was Mrs. Potts' husband because we all needed to know who Mrs. Mrs. Potts, Potts' husband, husband was. was. And Cogsworth, Cogsworth's wife who he hates or something. Yeah, it's like, let's, oh boy, is, let's, even though this movie is so progressive and modern, let's add some good old woman hating. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is all just really unneeded. Mm-hmm. Completely unneeded. Yeah, so that was just a weird, dumb way to end the movie. And they sang the Taylor's oldest time. And, oh, Agatha, or whatever the Enchantress's name is, she's in the ballroom scene singing the song. But mm-hmm. she's all, like, ornately dressed, so nobody recognizes her, except, like, maybe, uh, what's-his-face uh, dad... Maurice. Maurice recognizes her because he like acknowledges it because he's oh, sitting there painting the scene for some reason. Yeah, he's it's painting. Like, this is his dancing. daughter's wedding to a prince, and he's just gonna sit there and paint it because that's how that works. <laughs> okay, and now, so before we forget, let's talk about the most bullshit of scenes they decided to add to this movie. Oh yeah, this <laughs> this scene. All right, so the Beast in this version obviously didn't give the library as the special gift. Instead, uh, the movie makers are like, we need to have something new and special and fantastic. That he gives Belle. That makes no sense. Yeah. Apparently, the Enchantress gave him a magic teleportation book. And it's not like a magic, like, oh, well, where you want to go? The book will take you because books are magical places that take you to faraway lands. No, this is literally a book that, that just takes, takes you, you wherever to... you want to go through time and space. Just boom, you're there. So where do they go? They go to Belle's child home and she finds out how her mom dies because she apparently lived in Paris. Uh, Paris. They lived in Paris in a windmill. Mm-hmm. Just want to say right now, uh, if you live in a windmill, you're a miller. Not a farmer. You're not a farmer. You're not an artist. Yeah. You're a miller. You do milling with your windmill. 
Also, your house would not be inside the windmill itself. You'd be in a house next to the windmill. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, That's though, just lo- small... logistics aside. Um. So, so, yeah, for some reason, the Enchantress gave the Beast this book. And the only explanation they give for him having this book is because it was part of the Enchantress's cruel joke because a beast doesn't belong in the outside world. Yeah, but he can go anywhere he wants. He's not stuck in this castle. It's not a big deal. Right. And then this book is, like, don't think that this book comes up ever again because it does not. No, after the scene is done, it's gone. It's forever not mentioned. It's It never existed before the scene. It never exists after the scene. It just comes and goes with... A tiny payoff that doesn't even work. Yeah. Because, yeah, they go back and they figure out that Belle's mom died of the Black Plague. I don't know if they say Black Plague, but the, it's... The Plague. The Plague. And there's, like... <laughs> they the, the they find... They find... <laughs> they don't see Belle's mom. No. They, like... No. They're they piece there. It together. They piece it together. It, it's it's so weird because like the film becomes like a little Beast and Bell detective story for like all of two minutes before it goes back to the normal plot. Where like they pick up a doctor's plague mask, like those long Beaks. bird yeah bird beak like masks, and Beast is like it's a plague mask, and. <laughs> And Belle picks up this this little glass rose, rose rattle, rattle which, which is why you have a glass rose rattle is weird, but okay for this movie. Sure. It's a symbol of her childhood, sure. And this is that rose rattle is why she's always obsessed with getting a rose every year. Yeah. No, seriously. Yep. She was a baby. She would have had this rattle for, like, the first maybe four Four. months at most of her life. Mm -hmm. You don't imprint like that. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. Okay. Uh, Magic. 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 Whatever. (laughs) Okay. Sure. And, yeah, so that's that scene. That's it. That's all that happens here. They don't, they don't bond anymore. They don't like, get to bond over the fact that they both have dead moms raised yeah. by their fathers. Yeah, it's, like, obvious thing to do, considering Belle and Beast have, like, nothing going on between them, is for them to be like, you lost your mom that you loved? I lost my mom that I loved. But no, the movie doesn't even... <laughs> doesn't even, like, hold on to that. It's, it's just said to wrap up a plot point that didn't need to be added into this movie. Mm-hmm. And then later Bell like uses like okay, this is how we know that the book is not just, just an image that they went to. Because Bell brings back the, the glass rattle. rattle. She has it with her throughout the rest of the movie. Well, one scene, because she gives it to her dad, and he's like, I know what happened to mom. And he's like, how'd you get this? (laughs) Essentially. And they're like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let's escape now, so I can go warn the beast, because I'm still wearing this stupid gown dress through all of the end of the movie. Except she just continuously strips off more clothing as the thing goes on. Well, but (laughs) it, it just turns into a different dress then. It's not like she's left with, like, the pantaloons or something no she kind of is not not really like it was just like the underdress yes but then later when she's back at the castle she rips that part off too so she is just like in the pantaloons oh it's really it's like why did you do all this you could have just had her quickly change change before she left the castle in the first place one of those things is like you don't need an explanation. It was like, well, you know, if she really loved her dad, wouldn't she just take off right then and there? Yeah, but she's not an idiot. Yeah, but who wants to take off in the middle of the night in a big, huge, gaudy yellow ballroom dress? It's like she's already shown earlier in the movie she doesn't care for big, gaudy dresses to begin with. So why would she continue wearing this one? Yeah. Uh. Or if, if, you know, we're going to go with the whole like... You know, she's got to go so fast, so she's just kind of ripping it off. 
she doesn't rip it off until, until she gets after back to the she town. gets back to town. She's been captured, and then they're riding back to save the beast. And then that's when, while she's riding a horse, she decides to rip the dress up. Yeah, and it's just like, why, why now? Uh, yeah, that scene, that whole plot thing with the mom, the rose payoff. Mm-hmm. It's all really badly done. Yeah. Oh, it's... And then the credits roll. And the credits roll, and we walked out. Yeah. We... We normally We sit. normally stay through all the credits because yeah. we want to acknowledge that these people worked on this film, like, worked on these films. It's just like, no. We're going. We're going. We're too angry. <laughs> well, not... Okay. I'm disappointed. We were disappointed. We were... We screamed There's... a lot once we first got out of the movie, but yeah. we were able to calm down, and that's why we're recording this now. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in being angry. This movie is what it is. It's not worth it. It's a cynical cash grab. It's a cynical cash grab because corporate money, 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 money. Mm-hmm. I don't suggest seeing it. If you're really curious, just watch the original again and just imagine how worse it could be. Just appreciate <laughs> how good the original is. Yeah, because, that's a good way to do it. You know what? If this movie is going to do anything, it's probably going to make people realize how good the original is. Yeah. At least I fucking hope so. I swear, if I hear one person say, that the new I better, liked the new one more than the original. You punch him in the face. It's like, just bam, knock him out. It's like, no. I'll, gast- I'll Gaston knock you out and then leave you in the woods for the walls. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> How do you like that for adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, though. Do you I have think, any other thoughts or is that it? I mean, honestly, I could go on and on and on about but this, this and, you know, these remakes and general, stuff. And but I'm sure we've been at this for a and long time. I think we've been at this for probably two hours. Oh like my the gosh. running time of the movie or something. <laughs> well, there you go. Now you've seen the movie. I mean, we went through most of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been Sean. And I've been Tanil. Go watch the original Beauty and the Beast movie again, kids, and appreciate it for the masterpiece that it is. All right. Bye. Bye.